currently working on this BMW and it's got a very bad brake shutter. Uh, what that means is when you press the pedal, you're getting a heavy pulsation coming through. You can feel it through your foot. You can also feel it through your hand in the steering wheel as it shakes. And you can hear it and feel it throughout the cabin as well as you're driving. Because this is a great example of brake shutter, I decided I'm going to make this into a video. I've done thousands of brake inspections over my career and I'm going to share some of the processes I use to diagnose these faults. In the first part of this video, I'm just going to bring you for a test drive, I'm going to show you the actual example of what this vehicle presents like. Then I'm going to be doing a, a test on one of the corners of the vehicle, one on the front more than likely because brake shutter is typically usually on the front more than the rear. But you can apply this process on any corner of the vehicle that you would be working on. So I'm going to take you through those steps and I'm also going to share a couple of examples that I've experienced throughout my career on when the brake shutter is present and an underlying fault that needs to be rectified before you would replace or repair those brake discs or rotors. So without further ado, let's get into this video. <laughs> Okay, so that's a couple of real world examples of how this um, presents. It's very bad on this vehicle. It's shaking through the pedal, which I gave an example of there. I could feel it through the steering wheel. I'm not sure how uh, visible it is on the video, but it's, uh, it's pulsing through my hands as well. And the cabin, you can feel and hear the cabin shaking as the brakes are applied, especially when it's from a reasonable high speed down to a low speed, uh, you, you really can feel that shake coming in. So that's the examples now. I'm gonna bring this into the garage. I'm gonna um, set up some of the testing that you would be doing and how you can um, analyze this should you have this brake shutter and want to address it yourself. Okay, so I'm back in the garage now after that road test. I have the passenger wheel removed, obviously jacked up in the air, and I have the dial gauge set up here. Now this dial gauge setup is usually done on this side of the vehicle because there's so much aluminium and not steel on these um, European vehicles, it can be difficult to set up, especially when you have this magnetic base set up like I have. So I have a steel cabinet here, which is nice and solid, which I have a magnetic base set up to. Dial gauge is set up. I even have a set around the zero mark. Doesn't really matter on that, but in this case it is. Dial gauge reading is millimeters on this one. Now, always refer to the manufacturer spec data on what runout you would want to see. On this one, I don't have it. I have the thickness variation of the brake disc. I also have the minimum thickness of that brake disc, aka rotor. I don't have the runout. So we're gonna go off a general rule of thumb which is 0 0.05. So 0 0.05 millimeter is a general rule. I'm expecting this one to be extremely bad anyways because the brake pedal is pulsing and the steering wheel is shaking. So it should be well beyond that regardless. We're gonna do one rotation. I put a little dot here. You can see visibly as it rotates up around back to 12 o'clock. Also make sure that the uh, brake disc is nicely secured. In this case, there's already uh, a hex head which is keeping it nice and tight so there's no movement. If that's not the case on your setup, you're gonna have to tighten it down. I recommend putting about three of them in place to make sure that it's nice and tight. I'm gonna do one rotation. You're gonna be looking at this gauge and as you can see, that's 10 there, that's 20 there and we're gonna be seeing, so that in the middle would be 0 0.05. If it goes beyond that, we know we're well outside of what we should expect to see. Uh, 
and that's one full rotation back around again uh, i couldn't really see it too much because i had it set up more so for the camera than me but i think it was up around the 12 13 mark i'll rotate it around one more time and see if i can get a better look Yeah, so roughly around the 12 on that, so 0 0.12. Now that I have confirmed that the runout is completely outside of spec on this vehicle, I can make my next decisions going from there. There is a couple of other tests that I want to showcase that is just good service practice when you're doing work on brakes. One of them is the minimum thickness check, a very simple quick check that everybody should be doing. There is a spec on every brake rotor and what's the minimum thickness that you would have before it's beyond serviceability and it's recommended for replacement. We're going to be checking that. The other one is thickness variation, which doesn't get done that often, but you would typically do it in four spots, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. You would get a measurement across all four points and then you would see the variation throughout those measurements. And again, you will compare it to your uh, spec data, which we will look up and see what that is. I believe I have both of those readings. Um, so I'm going to set that up now. We're going to take those readings and then I'm also uh, going to show a couple of tips on what you should do when you're preparing for replacement of rotors and one other check that you may not have thought of uh, which I've come across a few times in my career uh, and that's to do with run out and brake shutter as well that you should make sure that you're doing. Okay I have it all set up now of the dial gauge removed and we're ready for our next measurements. Typically this is a, a tool that you would be using this is a vernier caliper and you would be able to get the measurements using something like this or a micrometer. The fact that I work professionally uh, daily on this sort of thing, we have a tool that a lot of people wouldn't necessarily need. This is a brake rotor digital caliper reader. And the reason we have one of these is we typically don't have to take the wheels off every time to get measurements. We can visually see through the wheels and um, we're able to get a reading on the brake rotors. So it's a very handy and useful tool. And I'm gonna be taking a minimum thickness variation and now when you're going to be seeing that in four different points i'll do it from here which is easier to look at that's 30. twenty nine point seven ish Twenty nine point eight and twenty nine point six slash seven. Okay, so that is our four readings on that one. We're gonna go ahead, take off this caliper. Um, we're going to gain access, take off the uh, brake rotor as well. Then I'm going to showcase some of the tools I use uh, in preparation for putting all this stuff back together again. I have the brake caliper removed now. It's just in the background. It's hanging off uh, one of my brake caliper hangers, which is going to the coil spring. This uh, brake disc now is just held in by this 6mm hex head here, which I have loosened. Now, typically these will be stuck on, um, especially if you're in an area which has salted roads like I used to be, but there'll be rust which will sit at the back of this. It's seated for so long that it takes a bit of convincing to come off. One um, thing that I would strongly advise, even if you are replacing it, is not use a regular hammer just to hit it. Um, I have seen damage being done to hub flanges by excessive beating um, of the face, uh, trying to get them off. So hitting here, 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 and then the actual hub behind it, because the impact has been so heavy with these large hammers that were used, that it actually damaged the face of that. So I'm going to be using a dead blow. I'm going to be hitting it 
again in all four different spots rotating around and keep hitting it till it frees out you can use the likes of wd-40 or inox a good lubricant and spray it in around there uh, leave it for a little while come back and then hit it again and try and get it off without doing too much um, excessive damage on it again using something very large in, a, in an area like this and hitting on it can do more damage than just removing the rotor goggles on and because we're in a nice sunny area over here that came off very easy there's not much rust to deal with Okay, so the first thing you want to do before ever seating a new part on this is clean off this whole hub. This is what I use at work all the time. This is my SP Tools hex head. Had it for years and it whizzes through this nice and easy. Uh, you can put it on a drill as well. You can get a bit like this, put it on a drill. And this is just a quick release tool. Again, I'm not expecting you to have a lot of these tools because it's something that um, when you're doing it every day you want to give yourself the easiest way to get around it wire brush is what I used to use before I had this a nice wire brush and sandpaper and clean up the face of that to where there is absolutely no rust left in it I'm going to give this a quick clean up now Always wear your safety goggles when you're using these type of things as well. I have had metal fly out of these and uh, they can be very dangerous too so. And if you hadn't got that tool, a wire brush, and just clean up as much as you can. Okay, so I've cleaned up the hub. I also did a bit of sandpaper across it because there was some pitting and um, some rusting which was causing the needle to flick aggressively. Um, I'm just going to showcase the difference in the readings from the rotor to the hub. Now bear in mind if this was warped that would transfer out uh, onto the hub and you would get that um, shake and shudder just like you would if it was just the brake rotor that had it. I have had this a number of times over my career. It hasn't been um, that many, but I still have experienced it about three or four times overall where the hub got damaged. Two reasons that I know of that that happened. One, the person that was taken off the uh, brake disc slash rotor hammered aggressively at it with something that they shouldn't have, used way too much um, basically weight in the hammer when they hit it and it caused this to bend in a bit the other ones that i know of was the bearing press so they were doing a bearing job the flanges on these can be extremely thin in two of the ones that i can remember uh, they were small little cars little kias little hyundai's and this flange was really really thin when the bearing was being put back in uh, it wasn't noticed that when the bearing was coming out that this actually bent a bit um, and when the uh, check was done later on both of the hubs needed to be replaced how that was found out unfortunately was the uh, brake discs had to be replaced and then afterwards the same thing happened again then the underlying fault was uncovered that a, a, a workshop had replaced the bearings at some stage and had caused the um, damage on this hub so what I'm going to do is just rotate this around again.
And as you could see there, very little movement in the needle. So I am happy with this. The other considerations that you need to do with every single brake job is making sure your slide pins are clear, making sure that there's nothing sticking. Um, so any of your um, hardware that's attached, sometimes you have those little shims, they're all clean and clear. Your brake pads are uh, free and don't have any debris where they're getting jammed. Uh, you have to assess everything. Obviously your brake caliper um, moves nice and freely and the piston isn't jammed. They're all the common things that you would check every single time regardless when you're changing pads. You lubricate, you clean, you make sure every surface that the brake pad is going to be moving on uh, is free and again those slide pins that you're going to be um, having that you have them taken out cleaned off re-greased and put back in and when everything is fitted together you have a nice free moving brake with no issues and that is the inspection complete on this vehicle of course we want to do the driver's side as well but for this video and all the information that you need i think i have uh, included it all the important ones on it is making sure that you check the hubs as well if you have a brake um shutter that has been very bad maybe you fitted brake rotors and then it comes back again at a later stage always consider the mating surfaces where the uh, brake rotor bolts onto you want to be uh, checking for pitting corrosion uh, any warps of any kind and again using that uh, dial gauge to do that check makes it uh, undeniable whether you have an issue there or not you'll be able to move past that or else focus in on it depending on your result if you are machining the brake uh, rotor or brake disc depending on what location you're in uh, you want to clean the inside of the hat before it reseats. So just down in here, that mating surface again that comes here has to be completely cleaned off. So again, you don't want any rusting, any debris, any corrosion of any kind in there going on to there because all of that will cause issues later on. Nice, free and clear. Lastly is the brake cradle slash carrier this is something that gets overlooked all of the time cleaning in here 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 and here all the areas that the brake pad would touch on and slide on and this wire brush that i got many years ago was exactly for that it was a thin one at the time before it flared out and i use it to run a in and out of those areas so that the brake pad surface is perfectly clean afterwards again use the correct lubricants on it uh, i use a bindex uh, lubricant um, i can't think of the exact name of it now but i will link in the description i found that it works very well there's many many ones on the market uh, but use suitable ones for high temperatures of course so you don't have any uh, issues with that and that is it for this one we know what we want to do with this now it's going to be new parts are required they're going to be specially ordered in and not available unfortunately locally so it's going to be fit this all back but when we get the parts we know we're going to have a fix with no further issues I really hope you enjoyed this one I hope you found it useful and informative if you did please like share comment and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one thanks for watching Thank <laughs> you.